Hello, I'm Kay Helm, and this is the Life and Mission Podcast, Episode 24, The Power of Lament. I don't know about you, but the first month of 2020 made me want a do-over. Personally, it was just, ugh. I feel like I didn't get anything done, and there seemed to be so much bad news. There's a lot of suffering in this world. And I think a lot of us started the year off this way, just heavy, feeling down. So let's go there for a minute. All last month, we talked about calling and purpose on the podcast, but what happens when things don't go as planned? What happens when you get bad news and when everything falls apart? Well, the Bible gives us plenty of examples, an incredibly powerful way to deal with suffering called a lament. A lament is a powerful form of worship. It's both an expression of grief or anguish and a cry of hope. You see, God's not shaken. Let me give you an example. I was at a conference several years ago during a particularly difficult time, and I had these promises from God inside of me, and I was holding on to those, desperately holding on, but I didn't see anything happening with them. So I was at this conference, and I was rooming with a really good friend, and, and she had stepped out for a bit, and while she was gone, I just had it out with God. I started praying, and I came to a point where I was just letting my sadness and frustration out. Well, my friend walked in, and she turned right back around and left. I heard the door open. I heard her standing there, and I heard her turn and go, go back out the door. I asked her later why she did that. Why did you walk in and then leave? She said, I've never heard anybody talk to God like that. And we joked, you know, about having the bolt of lightning strike at any moment. And she said, I didn't want to be there for that. I figured, hey, God knows what I'm thinking anyway. He knows my doubts. He knows my fears. And he already knows that I'm dealing with all this stuff. So why not say it? Why not just put it out there and ask him about it? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You know who said that? Jesus on the cross. He was quoting David from Psalm 22, which says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? So there it is. If it's good for Jesus and David, I suppose it's good for me too. More than one third of the Psalms are laments. And then of course there's Job and an entire book called Lamentations. Habakkuk is another one and more. So why am I talking about a lament on this podcast? I'm supposed to be encouraging you, finding your voice, you know, tell your story, change the world, all that awesome stuff. But the truth is, we get stuck sometimes. So, again, why not talk about it? That voice that we talk about so much here, that finding your voice, sometimes that just gets stuck at the back of your throat. There's no strength to push the dream on. The world's too big to change and the burdens are too heavy to carry. But take heart, friend, you weren't meant to carry these things alone. And that's why I go to lament during those really hard times. It's just such a reminder that I'm not alone. The greatest thing to me about lament is that God hears our cries and he doesn't condemn us for it. Grief is a part of life and it's also a journey that takes time. There's power in naming what has been lost. Lament gives us a place to name the losses to put words to our pain or our groaning or wailing, whatever it looks like, it's all there. As a culture, though, we're uncomfortable with suffering. We mean well, but our attempts to alleviate suffering with platitudes can ring shallow and even hurtful. There are times when there truly is nothing to say, except perhaps, I'm here and you are not alone. That's what God does. He is with us. And he's not going to offer up a quote he saw on Instagram. He's not going to change the subject or walk away. Even when he's silent, he's still there. C.S. Lewis wrote, A Grief Observed After the Death of His Beloved Wife, Joy. He said, The time when there is nothing at all in your soul except a cry for help may be just that time when God can't give it. You are like the drowning man who can't be helped because he clutches and grabs, perhaps your own 
reiterated cries deafen you to the voice you hoped to hear. Mark Vrogop is a pastor and author of Dark Clouds, Deep Mercy, Discovering the Grace of Lament. He writes, Every lament is a prayer, a statement of faith. And he goes on, You might think lament is the opposite of praise. It isn't. Instead, lament is a path to praise as we are led through our brokenness and disappointment. The space between brokenness and God's mercy is where this song is sung. Think of lament as the transition between pain and promise. It is the path from heartbreak to hope. And if you look at the pattern for a biblical lament, you can see that transition. It starts by addressing God and sometimes a review of God's faithfulness in the past. And then there's a complaint. And this is the part where we just pour out our pain, our emotions. And there might be a confession of sin or a confession of innocence. It's the why God part. Why? Why me? And then there's the request. We're asking God to do something. Come and rescue us. And the lament ends with an expression of trust or praise. So you see, a lament is not a denial of faith, even though sometimes we're so afraid to express all the things we're feeling. It's not a sign of weak faith, and it's not a sign of weakness in our own being. Rather, it's a way of reaching out to God And it actually signals that we trust God with our deepest questions and in our most painful and raw moments. It is a form of worship. And when someone near us is suffering, we can come and sit beside them. We can join them in the lament. The Bible says, mourn with those who mourn. It is an act of love. So if you've had a hard beginning to the year, I just want to say you are not alone. I've put some resources in the show notes at lifeandmission.com. There's a pattern for lament. I put links also to the two books that I mentioned, and there's a link to a great new podcast. And if this episode resonated with you, and especially if you or someone you love is living in a painful season or in sickness, there's a podcast. It's called This Too Shall Last. It's brand new. It's by KJ Ramsey. And uh, she's, it's really, she's great. And the podcast is real and honest, but it's also really uplifting. Not that fluffy kind of uplifting, but just real stuff you can hold on to. So head over to lifeandmission.com slash 34 episode for episode 34 and get those notes. That's it for this week on the Life and Mission podcast next week. Um, actually, not next week, in two weeks, because we're now going to the every two week schedule. And we'll do that uh, probably at least through the summer. And then we'll decide if we're going to go every week again or if we're going to stay with the every two weeks. For now, that's it for the Life and Mission podcast. Find your voice, tell your story, change the world.